everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with some cotton yarn and some sock yarn and a new to me dye, sort of. You can probably tell from the title, but I am going to attempt to speckle these different yarn bases with some Rit powder dyes. I've used the premixed liquid dyes a lot, I haven't ever tried playing with these powdered dyes, and so Let's give it a go and see if we can get speckles on these yarns. Today's video is sponsored by Erica Vaca, and I am so excited to dye this yarn for you and hope that you'll like the results. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna turn out, but I am very excited. We have Knit Picks Dishy, which is 100% cotton. Knit Picks Cotton Boucle, which has one looser twist and one fine twist, and I really love how it takes up color. Um, this is also 100% cotton. And then we have Knit Picks Stroll and Hawthorne. Uh, both of these are superwash wool and nylon blends. The Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the Hawthorne is 80% fine Peruvian highland wool superwash um, and 20% polyamide. The Hawthorne is a higher twist than the Stroll, so that could conceivably make a difference in what we see today. The Rit dye says that we should use salt for cotton fibers and vinegar for wool, and that is exactly what we are going to do for our pre-soaks. I pre-soaked the yarn overnight in some plain tap water with all four skeins in one bucket. The wool sock yarns don't really need to pre-soak that long. The cotton, even with a long pre-soak, sometimes I find dry patches, but since we're going for speckles today, it shouldn't be a big deal. <laughs> if you want to learn more about any of the yarn or materials that I am using today, you can find affiliate links in the video description. The pre-soak water turned a little yellow. I think that's from the cottons, but I'm now going to add, oh dear, um, I'm going to add about half a cup of some table salt in here, and I'm just even using my hand to stir it up to dissolve it. Okay, and now I'm going to take the cotton yarn and put it back in this salty water. And I'm sort of squeezing it to let it sort of soak up all that salty goodness. And I'm going to leave things in here probably another 30 minutes um, just so it has plenty of time to equilibrate. In this other pan with an unspecified amount of water, I'm going to go ahead and add a half cup of white vinegar, which is a lot, like that's a fair amount of vinegar. And then I'm going to put the sock yarn back in here. Now in this case, I don't think that we need the same length of a pre-soak. Um, I think that even leaving it in for five minutes or something would be fine. I'm debating now if I want to do everything at once on the counter, but I think instead I'm going to leave the cotton to soak in the salt water for a bit and play with the wool-based yarns first. And that is because there are many ways that I know to speckle on this yarn with food coloring, with acid dyes, and I don't have as many good techniques for speckling on cotton, and so in the past I've, do, I've speckled on cotton thread by using the Rit liquid dyes and a paintbrush. But if I can get speckles with this powder, that would be awesome. But if the results are more like what I see with tulip tie dye powder where the colors spread and you get this beautiful watercolor effect, that's awesome too. So yeah, I am going to now, uh, yeah, maybe let's start with the sock yarn and so that way we get a sense of how we want to do it over here. Okay, my respirator is on, my safety goggles and gloves are all on. The one thing about this dye that I don't like is that it comes in these packets. And I, I don't know, I prefer jars. But this is a dye that is easier to find in person. Even with AC Moore going out of business. So, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I think I'm just going to dump the whole thing into these cups. And then worry about the leftover dye at the end. I mean, each of this is supposed to be enough to do like pounds of fiber, but 
Oh, and so you can see I've got Kelly Green and Navy. And I'm coming in. So the dye feels very coarse. And the navy looks like it's breaking to me. I see some bright blue, I see some navy pigments, and I think I saw a pop of red. And so that's always the thing with using dry powder. You don't know exactly what you're gonna get. So zooming in, I'm not sure if you guys could see the different red and navy specks. Like initially, it looks like we're getting some great speckles, but will these colors spread out? And I feel like tie-dye initially, you see some speckles, but then it spreads. So it's that spread that I'm curious about. I may not have been recording, but in the little bit of green that I've tried, I maybe see some green and blue speckles. I definitely see red, navy, and blue in that navy color though. I am terrified of this dye spilling all over the place. Now at this point, I'm not gonna worry about um, mixing up the colors and cleaning my gloves in between like I normally would with a dye stock. I just can't. There's so much powder and there's not, I don't have a good way to store it yet. Um, I don't want to go too heavy and then lose the speckles, but um, this is nice. It's really easy, really easy to apply this to the fiber. These granules are big. Um, and so it's nice. I think that this is supposed to be used like in the washing machine, something like that. Not that I would recommend doing that at all, <laughs> but yeah, this is like, it's sinking into the yarn nicely. Uh, I don't have many complaints yet. <laughs> Rit can have a lot of washing steps. And so that's usually where my complaints come in. Okay, the greens are starting to spread out a bit more than those navies. Uh, just in this time that like I've been sitting here, the specks don't seem quite as sharp. Um, but I'm going to go rinse off my gloves and then come give you guys a closer look. Here's some of the green on the stroll. You can really see those different pigments in there. There might also be some navy on top of it. But with the green, I mostly see that green and bright blue. See all those red flecks from the navy? I mean, it's so far so good for having nice speckles on our wool. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, in, I'm encouraged. I am going to flip this over and apply color to the other side, off camera, and before we start getting into Erica's cotton yarn. I have a yarn mop on hand to help me wipe up the counter and get rid of some of this excess pigment. Instead of using a paper towel, I figured why not use some more yarn. I am nervous about this pigment ending up on not the counter as much because it's protected but on the floor because these pigments are so big um, but I think that chroma twist bulky is 70% superwash wool 30% nylon I'm now going to very carefully I'm attempting not to rub too much I'm going to go plop this into my steamer basket. And as for this dye left on the counter, that is what this mop is for. I'm also going to make sure I wipe down the floor to remove any pigment. This dye feels like I'm less worried about inhaling it, even though I'm still wearing my mask. I'm more worried about Honestly, it rolling onto the floor and getting wet and staining something. So, for that reason, and the fact that it doesn't come in a jar or something, it is not my favorite. But ultimately, 
you know, there is, clearly there was some pigment left, but not a ton, a ton. The wool yarns are steaming in here. I still see a fair amount of white. The colors are definitely spreading, but there are things in there that I would consider speckles. So we're going to steam for 40 minutes total, which means I'm going to wait to start dyeing the cotton because I want to uh, let the steamer basket free up. I just removed the sock yarn from the steamer basket. Ooh, I see a yellow speck in there. Um, the colors did spread, but without question, we do have some speckles. But I'm going to set this aside to cool and cross our fingers that the color is well set. Okay, let's try the cotton. Um, like peeking in at what's going on in the steamer basket, it looks like there are some colors spreading, but I definitely see some speckles there as well. So I am mega, mega curious to see what's going to happen on this cotton. I think, like, while I like the coarseness of it, I hate the coarseness of it too. I just feel like the dye is going to go absolutely everywhere, and that's making me nervous. So that's the one thing I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm realizing I don't want to go like super heavy. Uh, so I'm trying to spread it out a bit. I did squeeze out a fair amount of water from here. I hope I didn't squeeze out too much. That would be, that would be a shame. But I also don't want to just overdo the dye. But that's also why I did two different types of cotton. So that way we could hopefully see. But yeah, it's taking longer for this dye to sort of sink into the cotton than it did the wool. And I think that that could just be an absorbency thing. The cotton, once it is wet, is I think more absorbent overall. Uh, it's like, come on colors, sink in. It's sort of just like sitting on top a little bit. So I'm actually, I think gonna sit back and wait like a good five, 10 minutes. Here's the dishy cotton. And if the speckles stayed like this, that would be awesome. But a lot of the dye hasn't even really sunk into that fiber yet. It's sort of just sitting on top. More of the dye looks like it's sinking into this uh, cotton boucle fiber, but it also just doesn't look like there's a ton of pigment overall. Ten minutes later, and the colors now feel more sunk in. They feel less powdery than they did before. The thing that's really surprising me right now is how red and purplish that navy feels on the cotton boucle. I'm sure that different pigments might strike at different rates, but that is super different from even what we're seeing. Oh, it's looking pretty red on the dishy too, I suppose. Now I'm going to flip all of this so we could start dyeing the other side. You know, the yarn is feeling pretty heavy, so it's not that dry. Uh, but yeah, these are looking like sharp, sharp speckles to me right now. Well, except for the places where I added on some dye a little heavier. But yeah, I'm happy. Um, I don't want to like overdo it and go too heavy because the goal is to create speckles here. But man, I am pretty excited. I'm nervous that the colors will spread out a lot <laughs> at the end, but I do think I will use some of the color fixative. I still don't know what's in it and if it's absolutely necessary or not. Oops, that's a lot. But I don't think 
it does any harm to the fiber. I'm just, I'm just nervous about these, like, these, it's like sand. It feels like sand, and like sand, I'm worried that it's gonna end up all over my whole house. Um, I have not found a lot on the floor or anything when I've gone and wiped it. I just, I have nerves, guys, I have nerves. Um, but I do like the size of the particles. I think part of the problem is they also sort of roll off of the cotton a little bit. Right, so it's not exactly staying where I put it. I think that this is a case where we probably could mix this with some salt uh, to dilute it a bit if you wanted. Okay, I... I don't want to go too heavy, but I don't want to go too light either. Okay, let's wait another 10 minutes. And while we are starting to wait, our little yarn mop, I know it is a bit vinegary, but I'm just using it to help get this dye that's sort of, it rolls, it really does roll. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That scares me. Okay, I'm gonna go wipe everything up. Okay, I think since we're stuck in, and let's go, let's go steam this. I don't wanna go too big and have regrets. I mean, right now we could end up with real speckles on cotton. Maybe, maybe. I very carefully try not to rub it too much because I don't want to encourage things to spread going into the speaker basket. And then I'm going to come up and finish wiping up very carefully, wiping towards the middle of this table with this yarn mop. Once again, we're going to steam for 40 minutes, but I mean, I see things that look like speckles under the steam. The 40 minutes are up. And, wow, I see, I mean, some areas where the colors have definitely spread, and it's really, really steamy, but I do see some speckles! Woohoo! Alright, I'm going to let this cool completely. As for our yarn mop, I'm now going to go steam this for 40 minutes to set the color. Let's wash our wool yarn. Now, I have found that Rit dyes can be fairly color fast on wool yarn when you sort of treat them like acid dyes. So, with any luck, that will be the case here. And honestly, so far, so good. Um, I am not seeing any color come off. And there's no question that we've got some really fun speckles in here. Now, is this as speckled as, say, we would get if we used acid dyes? No. But we're seeing less color spread than we did with tie dye. And I'm adding some dish soap right now um, just to see if we'll see any bleeding. Now, I did not go through multiple layers, but we did get really good coverage, all things considered. But man, using this dye on the counter did make me super, super nervous just because I was afraid. I was afraid that the dye was just going to go everywhere, like sand, except with dye. Ooh, can you imagine if sand, like, stained everything? Um, maybe, maybe there's a hint of some color, although this pan does have a tinge to it, so it's hard to say. Nevertheless, I would say the majority of the color is in the yarn. I'm going to rinse it a few times and put it through the spin dryer. And then we are going to come and color fix the cotton yarn. This time there will be some bleeding, but I put some of the RIT Color Stay uh, Color Fixative in a spray bottle. And I'm spraying the yarn. I know that this will lead some color spreading likely um, but I think color is going to spread and you can see some dye has gotten on the 
inside of that pan. I have no idea what is in this fixative, but I figure this is our best chance to help try to reduce the bleeding. So now I'm gonna wait 20 minutes before we wash it. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's see what we can see here. So far, I'm not seeing very much at all. Okay, I'm seeing a hint of some bleeding. And I definitely saw like some streaks of color happen when I took this out. We've got some speckled cotton yarn. I put on gloves because I was expecting, I'm gonna turn the heat up of this tap water. I was expecting to see more bleeding. I was expecting to see a lot of color run off, but maybe my restraint helped. I mean, I'm excited. So the water is getting warmer and I added some soap. I mean, Maybe a tad bit of color is bleeding, but this looks beautiful. And the navy definitely turned like cooler tone as time went on. So I'm gonna rinse this a few more times and then also put it through the spin dryer. Let's wash our yarn mop. I think the best thing that I did for this project today was just have a lot of restraint. Um, I had restraint when it came to the amount of dye I put on the yarn. And the particles being so thick and chunky really, really helped with that. But you can see all of our color is in this yarn. I'm going to go ahead and wash it like I did with the rest and hang it up to dry. You guys, we did it! We did it! We created speckles on cotton yarn. True speckles, sharp speckles. This has not been accomplished before here on the Kemet Tutorials YouTube channel. Here is the stroll and the hawthorn. As I said, there have been many, many ways we have created speckles on superwash wool yarns especially. But here is the cotton boucle and I think some of these speckles are a little harder to see because of the thick and thin nature of the boucle yarn. But here is Dishy. Without a doubt, those are sharp, 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 sharp speckles. And I am thrilled. To be fair, I have not yet tried to speckle with fiber reactive dye powder. That is definitely on the list, and it's not something I have tried yet. This is the, f but this is the first dye powder that I've gotten to successfully get sharp speckles on cotton. And we've tried dial-in hand dyes. We tried uh, tulip tie dye powder. I don't think I've tried uh, jacquard eye dye yet, but oh, it worked! And this is a dye that's really, really easy for people to find. You can find a worsted weight cotton yarn that might not be bare, but it is like a dyeable light. And in many big box craft stores like Joann's and Michael's, you can find Rit dye powders. And that's, that's what you need, and you can create this at home. Now, the downsides. I use some leftover like takeout containers to store the dye powder, but they do not come in a resealable jar which means I was terrified it was gonna spill while doing this. And I was terrified that the dye was just gonna roll all over the floor. I don't think it did, but it could have. So I would actually recommend using, even if you're gonna hand, hand speckle like this followed by steaming, I would do this inside of say my chafer pan or something, something with walls to prevent the dye from spreading around on the counter. Um, or even using some kind of large plastic lid, something with a lip, so that way you can keep everything a little more contained. I think the Knit Picks Dishy is the star of the show today. I mean, look at how sharp those speckles are. Erica Vaca, this is the yarn I'm going to be sending to you. The speckles are definitely larger in many areas on the cotton boucle, but there are 
some segments where you can see those sharp, sharp speckles. Maybe because this one feels more absorbent um, than the Dishy at first, maybe that contributed it to it. I'm not sure, but this is a reason why I wanted to try two different cotton yarns in this video, so that way I would have a, something to really compare it to. I think that the speckles are showing up better on the smoother yarns like Stroll here and Dishy than on the ones with more of a twist like Hawthorne and the Cotton Boucle. Um, but all of the yarn is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Even our bonus yarn mop has some nice subtle and sharp speckles to it. Erica Vaca, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I have a blast going outside my comfort zone trying new dyes or new yarn bases and cataloging that journey and my experiences with it so that way all of you can come along with me and we can all learn together about what works, what doesn't work, what we should tweak. And well, speckling with the RIT dye powder works. It works. It works best on the cotton but I might have also used a lighter hand when I was dyeing the cotton yarn than when I was using uh, the wool-based yarns, but nevertheless, it worked. When I first started my journey into commercial dyes, the first commercial dye I tried was liquid writ dye. Um, I was nervous about powders, and I liked that it was available in liquid form. I still like that it's available in liquid form. The, the lesson I learned the hard way, though, is don't use too much, then you have a lot of washing. But if you use a reasonable amount, you can get it to exhaust, and that's awesome. <laughs> As I've said many times, the downside of the RIT dye powder is that it's intended to be used all at once versus a little bit at a time. It's not a resealable container, and that's just a bummer um, because it works pretty well. Now, I'm curious to see how it performs once dissolved compared with maybe the RIT liquid dyes, and there's a lot that I can do there to explore. And of course, I wanna try speckling with fiber reactive dyes. Don't worry, that's something that is high up on my list. But it's always nice when there's a dye that is easily accessible for people who maybe can't shop online, and it works, and you can play around with different techniques. And there are just so many possibilities here. I'm just thrilled, I'm so thrilled with how all of this turned out. And I'm excited to play with this more in the future. I have so much dye in my stash that I'm not about to run out and buy, you know, a complete collection of these colors. But you will be seeing, likely in 2020, some more videos where I'm using this Kelly Green and Navy dye. Make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and let me know in the comments about your experiences with RIT dye powders. If you love the yarn I dye and want to snag some for yourself, head over to the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop. Uh, there are over 100 skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos. And so you can watch, rewatch the video while knitting, crocheting, weaving with the yarn. And it's just another added layer to the story that went in behind whatever it is that you're crafting. And I think that's a lot of fun. You can find links for everything in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.